Hey guys, I'm Timmy. Welcome back to Three Old Tech Dudes. This week I want to show you guys this radio. It's uh, from about 1959 or 60. My grandpa bought it new. Looked all over town, he said, for dual speakers. The dual speaker Westinghouse. So um, it hasn't worked for many years. I uh, found it in their basement recently when I was over visiting. I uh, said, hey, can I uh, try to get this fixed up and get it going? And they said, sure, why not? So it's kind of neat. My great aunt remembers listening to the music uh, on the radio on stations like WAKY and WLS in Chicago, all the way down here in southern Indiana. And when she was babysitting my mom and her siblings and just really neat radio get fixed up. My mom remembers it uh, being on top of the fridge, uh, listening to radio every day before school, you know, so... So I uh, hope you'll stick with me here for the journey and we'll get her going and uh, fixed up because uh, right now it's dead as a doornail. <laughs> This Westinghouse H673T5 is an All-American 5. It's a 5-tube radio. It's a pretty common design. It was uses only 5 tubes and no transformer. The idea was to make the sets cheap to manufacture. It's the most common radio design you'll find in old plastic radios and even some Bakelite radios before that and wooden radios in a few cases. Common problems with these radios are usually regarding the ripple filter, capacitors and uh, paper capacitors, things like that. Usually your tubes are good. We're not even gonna test the tubes in this. We do need to check the power cord. It's pretty rough on this unit after being around for 60 years or so. So we'll start out by replacing the ripple filter caps because we know those are bad. You'll, you'll see that in just a second. And uh, we'll go through the paper capacitors from there and See if we can get overall improvement in its operation and frequency stability and things like that. So, here we go. First, I thought I'd better demonstrate what these radios do when they need the ripple filter capacitors replaced. There's a chance more capacitors need replaced as well, but this radio has not really been in use for probably 35 or 40 years. Go ahead and turn it on and get it warming up. I'll take a second until the tubes get warmed up. And you'll soon see what the symptom is very quickly. There it is. Even with the volume all the way down. Too long basically as the electricity is coming off the uh, 35W4 rectifier tube it is direct current but it's dropping up and down in voltage so much that you get the equivalent of the 60 Hertz hum off of the AC and that was extremely loud and the volume was all the way down all right let's get the back off here and see what we've got going on hmm nice let's get our first look here Got a lot of dust and dust bunnies and cobwebs. Looks like some of our tubes have been replaced. Looks like most are Westinghouse except for two. Westinghouse and Sylvania there is a GE. This is going to be our problem right here, this orange thing. It's a package electrolytic capacitor. Most everything else seems to match the schematic layout wise here. But this, this is going to be our problem item, because this is the ripple filter capacitor. There's two of them in one package. It's not something you see anymore. It used to be very common when these radios were manufactured. We're going to replace it with two separate electrolytics. And we're going to clean this thing up. Okay, now we've got all the screws and mounting things out of this thing, so we'll carefully Grab the chassis, which is a printed circuit board in this model, and wiggle it out gently. We've already got the knobs removed. You can see the left there. Um, 
Just got to kind of work it out over the metal mount. Sorry, I had trouble getting that one on the left out. So now we've got the chassis out and we can examine it more closely and get to work. I think it's pretty neat, this uh, felt background though, under the tuning dial. You can kind of see where the there's a line in it there from the tuner, the pointer there. All right, here's our cap. we got to get this out. we got to get this guy out. We'll remove it by desoldering these three lugs on the bottom of the printed board here. Pop this guy out of here. So these package caps always had poles marking the positive sides of the cap and then a common ground. So you see here you had the square marking a 50 microfarad pole, then a triangle in this case marking a 50 microfarad pole. Sometimes the cap the capacitances did differ. So there's your square and then there's the negative common ground and then there's a triangle. And these were filled with wax and uh, paste in there that was kind of, you know, actual electra lytic filling and it would dry out over time which pretty much makes these useless after a time over time this is what we'll replace it with we got some sprog 50 microfarad 260 volt electrolytic capacitors and this is your positive side here usually you can see the negative side because it has a silver cap on one end we're going to test this capacitance on this cool heath kit IT 2250 I picked up at the Sellersburg swap meet in Clark County a while back. So this is the first real test. We'll see how accurate it is. You stick your negative on the left, positive on the right. You know, get seated in there real good. and Showing 49.4. That's probably pretty close without having calibrated the Heath kit tester. So we'll call that good. And we'll test our other one here. Use the same method here. You gotta see these in really good. I think these poles need clean in the tester. Showing 49.6, so I'm gonna call them good. I was not sure if this meter would tolerate this, if it would change the capacitance or anything like that, but but it looks like this is acceptable. Use some cheater leads here and a couple little alligator cables, and I want to test this thing, which I expect to be complete garbage because these are always garbage. So we'll connect this to the negative side of the thing, and to either of the others, if it were working, should be similar readings. However, you get basically nothing. 0 0.007 microfarad. Until I knock my pins loose. I'm getting a few nanofarads. And then 0 0.004 microfarad again. So we've got another one here. <laughs> 0 0.005 microfarad. A fraction of the expected capacitance. So as these things are trash, anytime you've ever run across these, you need to just throw them in the trash. I've seen them for sale at a local ham fest here in Indiana, where somebody stripped them out of old gear. Don't buy them. They're garbage. Throw them away. They're they're junk. They don't make them. They're just not high quality items that did not stand the test of time. Unfortunately, you need these electrolytics though. Just put those in. They'll maybe give it another twenty or thirty years. So this was mounted like this in the board. So the top one is the negative pole. So we need to connect our positives, two caps, to there and there and tie them back here to the common ground. So we'll go ahead and get these threaded through here. Got to kind of bend them around and just try to fit them in the best you can since it's not a like footprint. You can, again, you can identify the negative of the caps by the silver side of the capacitor. So that's your positive side there. 
So, yeah. so we got one in. We'll thread this other one in here. Just got to make sure they're not touching anything else electrically or grounding out. Some people use a shrink tube on these leads, but here you see you got your negatives at the top with the silver cap and get them down in here. Fold them in where they don't fall out so you can prepare for soldering. Now we're stubbed out pretty good and we're going to check that we have connectivity. Got the negative wrapped around here so it'll hold out well. We'll solder the positives first here. I'll double check everything. Positive, positive. Got the negative end here with the silver caps on our negative. Just want to double check. Otherwise, you just, these things will pop like a firecracker if they're backward. So here we go. Now that we've got everything soldered to the conductors on the board, we will trim the leads to get the lead length down. Don't want to leave long leads. That's a recipe for disaster. So these were actually pretty difficult to solder down, and I want to verify that we have connectivity on, you know, the rest of the trace here. That we have continuity, so that one's good. Let's check this pole here. That one looks good. Get it in there. Come on now. There we go. Finally, the last pull here. Make sure it's got conductivity. And it does, so we're good to go there. Okay, we've got our new caps in. They look pretty good. This is a cap that's a paper capacitor. Sometimes they're called bumblebee capacitors, and you can kind of see why. And they're pretty known for failure. Um, we're going to go ahead and test without it for, with it in there for now. We put the back back on with the safety plug. The safety plug needs addressed too. I've found some conductor exposure there. They say the two most common things that fail on antique radios are power cords and ripple filter capacitors. Not the tubes. A lot of people think it's the tubes. Often your tubes are just fine. So, in fact, we're not even going to test the tubes. We're just going to light it off, see what happens here. We're going to do that with the chassis exposed. That's dangerous. These have a lot of high voltage right there where they can get you. So, they're not lower voltage like modern electronics, so you got to be very careful how you touch this. Before we test this, you know, all these copper parts will be a thing available. We're going to put the knobs back on to adjust things just so we're not touching anything conductive. So here we go. Okay, we're going to plug it in now. Ooh, I'm excited. Here we go. Yeah, I can't wait. Here goes our test. Might come up working. All the tubes are warming up. Hey, hey. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be around. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I just, I just a little bit of housekeeping, folks. We, uh, we thank you for that. So, um, that's okay with you, Tom. Um, it does we work. Are Got Ryan here with me. We're testing um, this thing out. Um, um, the the Corvette. So I'm trying to get him on the air for the uh, show after Thanksgiving oh. at Saturday. And that. No, next week, actually, we're trying to do it right. We're trying to get him on next week. And then we want to give away the complete. It is one of the quickest fixes you can do to Andrew Brady. It's a little pre holiday gift for everybody. Um, uh, so we like the. Uh, and also. That looked a little too glow. That's the best part of a little radio like this. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> it is neat, isn't it? Classic, we've talked about it before here. It has to be there. It looks like we only got one speaker working. Let's talk about that tough component because this Northwestern team is a team that doesn't have work at all. I hooked the scope to it. We've got the radio isolated properly, and it looks like we've got signal where we need it, so it must just be a bad speaker. Okay, I want to identify which side of the switch here is the neutral side. It is actually switched on the neutral, believe it or not. 
It was a common design with uh, all American 5 radios like this one, as you can see in the schematic here. Ideally, you want it switched on the live side, or the hot side. I'm going to address that in the future, but for now, I'm just going to make sure I have the new plug wired up to a new polarized plug and cord so that I know that I'm always, with the reasonable doubt, connected to the neutral side properly. So I have one for no continuity here. We'll pull our power switch, and it should show zero if I'm correct. And there it is. So we know this is the switch side. Just a quick note on why to replace power cords. Note the condition this one's in, where it had been flexed over the years. The uh, conductors are exposed here. Yes, I powered it on this. Yes, that's a bad idea. No breakers were tripped, and no fires were started, and nobody died, so we're getting rid of it now. I'm probably going to do away with the safety cord altogether. We're just going to solder it to the lugs if I think they're safe. And bend them up to where they won't be exposed from the back of the radio. So, you know, get a little solder on these and be good to go. I've marked the neutral side with white tape for my own convenience. Okay, I was going through my things here to replace this cap, this bumblebee junk cap. And here we've got a, let's see if it'll focus here. A 503K 630 volt. Let's see what he is to be sure, because I think I know. Yeah, showing 51.3 nanofarads on our handy Heathkit cap checker. So, got 51.3 nanofarads is 0.513 microfarad. Yes, I know you can move the decimal point. I just wanted to be sure the computer's smarter than I am, especially in the evening. If we look at our cap, which is C5, expects a 0.47 400 volt. I'm going to go ahead and let the capacitance go up a bit to 51.3, or sorry, 0.513. And this caps a 630 volt, so basically with capacitors you want to go up in tolerance, not down. Same or up. So we'll go ahead and get this bumblebee garbage thing desoldered. Can you guess why they're called bumblebees? Ha ha ha. Replace it with this little. Cornell Dublier, 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 ha ha, orange drop capacitor. Actually, y'all. Just for giggles, I went ahead and stuck this in the cap checker. It's showing 103.2 uh, nanofarads, which seems to be changing. That's about point. Of course, it was 1052 when I first turned it on, so now it's 10.1052 microfarad. We're looking for 0.047 ish, so more capacitance probably isn't an issue. See, it's all over the place. I don't know. Anyway, these are supposedly usually bad, so is isn't anything to replace it since we have it out already. Okay, we want to form these leads where they jump over the top of these, you know, 120 volt AC incoming line uh, connections here. So you want to just kind of bend it out and make him stand up over the pins like that. And then we'll get the soldering here. Let's get these pulled up real good. Grab the other pin here and do the same. And get the trim going, and we're good to go. These capacitors are not polarized. You can install them either direction, so that's helpful.
one other paper capacitor in this, and it is right there. According to the schematic, this is a 0 0.05 microfarad cap. I have to see what I've got in my stash, but I think we can do another one of these. So we'll look in our bag here and see what we can find here. The schematic calls for a 0 0.05 microfarad cap. We have a 51.2 nanofarad, which translates to 0 0.0512 microfarads. I think that'll do the job. down as far as we can get it. There we go. I want to roughly the same footprint as the original. Try to get to here. that'll do it for now. 
I'll go ahead and put it back together. We're going to order a speaker and we'll follow up on that in a future video. Thanks for hanging out with us here on 3L Tech News. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3L Tech News 1 on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.